Son, one and two. My name is Justin Daniel. I am a friend of both the Chetty and the Lawrence family. And I'm honored this afternoon to be directing the proceedings at this afternoon's ceremony, uh, together with the officiating minister, Pastor Thamo Naidu, and our pianist and song leader this afternoon, Pastor Justin Naidu. May I kindly request your honored guests to please take your seats and uh, settle in as we prepare to commence this afternoon's proceedings. But first, a few announcements. You'll notice that the venue has a steep terrain and you are therefore advised to exercise caution at all times and especially keep a watchful eye over your children and the elderly folk in your company. Please ensure, ladies and gentlemen, that during the course of the ceremony, your phones are switched to silent. And uh, whilst you may take photos during the, the ceremony, please ensure that your flash mode of your camera is turned off as well as your shutter sound as that will have a negative impact on both the photography and the videography this afternoon. Lastly, ladies and gentlemen, we request that you settle in and there be no movement uh, at the entrance or exit of the, of the venue as the bridal procession prepares themselves to make their entrance in a few moments. As you are seated, distinguished guests, family, and friends, we understand that God our Father, to be the creator of all things, and amongst his vast and various creation, he has created a beautiful place called marriage, a place where men and women would come together and live as one in holy commitment and covenant with each other and with him. And today, in the presence of our Heavenly Father, we've assembled to witness the joining together of Brady, Ethan Lawrence, and Abilene Chetty. And so for Brady and Abilene, it all started in the Thanksgiving celebration of November 2016. It developed into a magical proposal in December 2017. And we fast forward to today, the 20th of December 2018, where Brady and Abby will now enter into a new way of life. They will give each other consent. They will exchange solemn vows and exchange their rings. And so, ladies and gentlemen, as we commence the ceremony, we want to receive the retinue this afternoon. Led by Ethan Joseph, the uh, ring security, we are going to welcome the groomsmen, Braxton, Chad, Bryson, and Dylan, as they accompany the groom, Brady Ethan Lawrence. the moment together with Brady Ethan Lawrence. Now as we prepare to welcome the beautiful ladies of the bridal entourage, 
And they're going to be accompanied this afternoon by the Flower Girls, Talia Rupnarine, as well as the Page Boys, Ezra Naidu and Cairo Serona. And of course, the beautiful uh, ladies today is Delphine, Doreen, Tamara and Nikita. Spoke the earth and sky to fall. Who sets the sun and calls the dawn? Who bring me out of dust to Beautiful miniature bride is Samela Gavin. arrived for us to receive the most beautiful and stunning Abilene as she walks down the aisle accompanied by her dad Salvin Chetty where her groom Brady will receive her. God chose her from the rest because he knew that Brady would love her best. together for the beautiful bride as she will surprise the groom with a beautiful love song. And as we welcome her this afternoon, you can remain standing for the reading of God's word and she has surprised Brady with a beautiful love song 
And so from Brady to you, we're going to read a beautiful love scripture from Songs of Solomon chapter 4. And I'll be focusing on a few verses. And this is Brady's love expressed, even as Solomon's love was expressed. It says, how fair and beautiful you are, my darling. How very beautiful. Your eyes behind your veil are like those of a dove. Your hair is like shimmering black fleece of a flock of Arabian goats that have descended from the Mount Gilead beyond the Jordan. Your teeth are like the flock of a newly shorn ewes which have come up from washing. Verse 3. Your lips are like ribbon of scarlet and your mouth is lovely. We move on to verse 7. O oh, my love, you are altogether beautiful and fair. There is no flaw, no blemish in you. Verse 9. You have ravished my heart and given me courage, my promised bride. You have ravished my heart and given me courage with a single glance of your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. How beautiful is your love, my promised bride. How much better is your love than wine and the fragrance of your oils than all kinds of balsam and spices. You are the fountain in the garden, a well of fresh and living water and streams flowing from Lebanon. I'm just going to repeat verses 7 and 9. As Braid would want to emphasize these verses to you. Oh, my love, you are altogether beautiful and fair. There is no flaw, no blemish in you. You have ravished my heart and given me courage with a single glance of your eyes. And as Dad puts his hand into the hands of Brady, Brady steps forward. I'm going to ask Pastor Justin to lead us into a beautiful hymn this afternoon.
you, ladies and gentlemen. You may take your seats. As you take your seats, ladies and gentlemen, we understand that marriage is a gift from God. It's also a public declaration of love and commitment. And so this afternoon, to lead this beautiful couple into the exchange of their vows and declarations and to pronounce a blessing to them both through the word and prayer and through the table of the Lord, and I invite the pastor of both Brady and Abbey, He's a senior elder of Gate Ministers in Santon, now officiating minister this afternoon, Pastor Thamo Naidu. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Justin. It's my great privilege to greet you in the name of the Lord that brings us together. And to congratulate Brady and Abilene on this momentous occasion as you're about to receive the word of the Lord that will guide you and give you final instructions and also to engage in taking the vows that will seal the covenant of marriage between the two of you. I also want to take this opportunity of congratulating the parents Christopher and Christine, and also Salvin and Pam, for a great job done in bringing up two beautiful kids who can now venture into life's journey as a couple together. So may the Lord richly bless you in all your input and your sacrifices. Um, for the record, and I'd like to place this emphatically, I want to very specifically congratulate uh, Brady and Abilene for the honorable and godly way that they have approached this relationship that now consummates in marriage, for the steps that they have taken to ensure that they were, as I would put it in inverted commas, unfrequent. that they have been on frequency, not only with, with seeking the blessings of the heavens, but also um, seeking the blessings of their parents and also the blessings of the church. Um, they, in engaging yeah, or attempting to engage the courtship, chose firstly to seek premarital or pre-courtship counseling. And they did that with Pastor Trevor, who is here, and he will also lead them in the signing of the register today. And then they came to me as the senior elder of Gate Ministry Santon to receive a blessing. And thereafter, they started to venture into their courtship with the idea of getting married. For that, I want to say, God bless you, and well done. Well, I have a word for you. And it's a, it's a simple word, one very common to marriage ceremonies, but I want to place emphasis on a few things that I, I think are important for you in this wedding to take note of. Obviously, the message is being recorded and you will replay it over the process of time. I wanna emphasize today that marriage as a greater purpose than simply the union of two people. God did not create male and female primarily so that they could find each other in the bond and union of love. But there was a greater purpose that determined the divine plan. So often in a marital and sacramental gathering like this, people get so caught up with themselves that they often miss the bigger picture as to why God ordained and instituted the whole covenant uh, of marriage. And so today, if you want to, to seal the covenant between the two of you, you would also need to ensure 
that you stay within the framework of the grand plan and scheme for the marriage of two individuals. So the, uh, the emphasis of my sermon today is that um, the union that the two of you will enter into must, must not only seek to satisfy each other and make each other complete, but it must complete the eternal purpose for the bringing of the two of you together. Uh, so marriage is more than just two people committing to each other. It is a commitment to the eternal values which may transcend the commitment to each other. Uh, so today, Brady and Abby, as you will covenant, as you will submit and surrender your lives to each other, please covenant, submit, and surrender your lives to God also. So this is a twofold altar. It's not only the altar where would you would lose your lives to each other, but you must also lose your lives to an eternal purpose. Um, the bond of marriage, in my estimate, is unparalleled. Uh, when two people come together, it is the most powerful union in, li in life, and obviously it must migrate to the place where it becomes infinitely and indivisibly one. But sometimes the bond becomes so powerful that you become so connected to each other that you forget how to...
decisive decision that highlights the significance of marriage and the greater purpose to marriage. This is what Ruth said, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following after you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more so if anything but death parts you and me. This is, this is a statement not made between a husband and a wife or a couple courting. This is a statement made between a daughter-in-law and uh, to a mother-in-law. And um, it's a statement that makes her realize that though a marriage was broken or, or, or divided by death, that there was a greater purpose to life and staying connected to it than simply being married. And that's what's happening today here. You're not just being brought together, but you've been brought together to complete each other. And that's the divine design of God for the human race. But your completion is to stay connected to a lineage that will allow you to fulfill your divine assignment. And that lineage was epitomized by Ruth recognizing that Naomi and her people group was the people that will ensure a completeness. Later on, uh, Boaz, whom Ruth will marry, will say these words to, uh, to Ruth. Boaz answered and said to Ruth, it has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and has come to a people whom you did not know. So the point that is being highlighted here is that purpose made Ruth choose to become inseparable from Naomi. So apart from the two of you being joined today, you must realize that your purpose is not just having children, accumulating wealth, living in a good house, and just enjoying life as a family. Your purpose is to serve God. Your purpose is to submit to his will indefinitely. Even in death, you, are, you cannot be separated from the divine purpose of God. But, but secondly, I want to say that while you will be covenanting with each other and covenanting with God to serve him through your marriage so that his eternal plan for the human only way I know of that you can find security, safety, immunity, and perfect peace. Um, uh, these were the words daughter, shall I not seek security for you? Remember today that the greatest security you will find 
is in his presence, but in the covenant that you have entered into with him and with yourselves. Thirdly, marriage is about covering or coming under one's wings. And yes, in the context of the scripture here, um, the Bible will say when Boaz is going to uh, take the hand of Ruth in marriage, who are you? And so Ruth would say, I am Ruth, your maidservant. Take your maidservant under your wing, for you are a close relative. Um, I'm saying to you today that when you do come together, you're coming under wings. You're coming under covering. You're coming under a divine blessing. Uh, I can't explain it in words, but something very, very unique happens when the two of you will be joined together. When we bless you today, and you will experience a sealing coming upon you, S-E-A, L-I-N-G. There will be a signature of God upon you. There will be a marking upon your foreheads and into your spirits. There will be impartations uh, of grace where you will start the boundary of the shadow of those wings that you will come under, that covering. You will find your spirits being grieved. You will find... Uh, your conscience being hurt. You will sense that you're stepping outside of ancient landmarks that have been set for, the, for your purpose to be fulfilled in life because you are meant to stay in the shadow of each other's wings. That's how divine protection comes to you. And finally, marriage is, as I have said in the, in the beginning, perpetuating the greater purpose. And that is to not only carry God's image and likeness, but to replicate it, to reproduce it. Um, and um, you are now stepping into a dimension of transgenerational building, where God has chosen in the creation of the human race to ensure that his image and likeness would be kept within You are the most exact representation of God in everything that God has intended for your lives. And, um, but not only will you seek to represent him by being Christ to all and sundry around you, but you will also come to a place where you will have to perpetuate the name of the Lord through your posterity, which is a kind of a spiritual inheritance that you will create.
Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. And when he went into her, the Lord gave her conception and she bore a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, blessed be the Lord who has not left you this day without a close relative and may his name be famous in Israel. And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is better to you than seven sons has born him. Then knowing that heaven witnesses what they are doing here. So bless this marriage. Bless them, Lord, with your grace. And may everything that we say bring glory and honor to your holy name. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. The congregation can be, please be seated. So you can relax. <laughs> it seems like he just wants this part of the ceremony over with as quickly as possible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God saw that all he had made, and it was very good. The Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Then the Lord made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man, and he brought her to the man. In that act, God himself performed the first wedding ceremony and set the example for all homes in all times. We are gathered here today, several thousands of generations later, to follow the example of our God in joining together a man and a woman. We do not do this just as a legal requirement, but rather as a testimony to all that this couple want to obey and follow God in all that they do. You have been invited here as witnesses of this act of worship that this couple today commit before our God. You have also been summoned here to join in that worship of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the head of every Christian home. I'm going to ask the parents to please come and join me, both sides. 
Selvin and Pam, Christopher and Christine. Please come on either side of me. Well, two sets of parents and two families are also being joined together. The paradox of life is that while you are being joined together, this is the moment where you release your, your, your children. It's Chris, Christine, you will release Brady to his destiny in God um, uh, with Abby. And the same with you, Selvin, Pam, you'll be releasing Abby. That means that they are now being released to their destiny. Yeah. That means that the umbilical cord and bless them. Let's bless them. Father, we want to thank you for these parents who have in their own inimitable ways selflessly sacrificed to bring their children to a moment like this. Their greatest joy is to see their children being given in marriage in a holy, honorable, and godly way. And for that, we want to thank you that their joy could be fulfilled today. But their greater joy would be to see their children blossom into their identity and purpose for life. And you said, Lord, that a man, a woman must leave mother and father to cleave to each other. And today that cord is being broken and there is a cleaving that will take place. But Lord, we want to bless the parents that they will enjoy good, a, a good and a long life of, of health and strength, peace and prosperity, so that they can see their children's children. We also want these parents to have peace for the rest of their days on the earth, to know that their children are living well, living happily and peacefully with each other. So we bless the parents, and as they now release their children to their destiny, we pray that Brady and Abby will always honor their parents, love their parents, take good care of their parents, and always please their parents in whatever way that you've called them to serve in this life. So Lord, we, we commend the rest of this marriage ceremony to you now, knowing that we have received the blessings of the parents and the blessings that make rich and add no sorrow. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you want to greet them? Come, come, Chris. who gives endurance and encouragement give you a spirit of oneness among you yourselves as you follow Christ Jesus so that with one heart and mouth you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another then just as Christ accepted you in order to bring praise to God. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. And the words of the Apostle Paul 
in Philippians, make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose, do, doing, do, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Now omniscient God, and in the presence of these witnesses, will you, Brady, take Abilene to be your wedded wife? Will you love and comfort him, honor and keep him, and in joy or sorrow preserve with her this union, holy and unbroken, until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, or until God by death. You can say I will. <laughs> and now before the omniscient God and in the presence of these witnesses, will you, Abilene, take Brady to be your wedded husband? Will you love and comfort him, honor and obey him, keep him and enjoy or sorrow preserve with him this union, holy and unbroken, Thank you, Abilene. Thank you, Abilene. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. With, ge with deepest joy. With deepest joy. I receive you into my life. I receive you into my life. That together we may be one. That together we may be one. I take you now to have and to hold. I take you now to have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part according to God's holy word. Till death do us part according to God's holy word. And here too I pledge my faithfulness. And here too I pledge my faithfulness. Say the same. I, Abilene. I, Abilene. Take you, Brady. Take you, Brady. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. With deepest joy. With deepest joy. I receive you into my life. I receive you into my life. That together we may be one. That together we may be one. I take you now. I take you now. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better or for worse. For richer. For richer. I'm not sure what the poorer, but for poorer. <laughs> In sickness
run a number of mementos of your wedding and of this moment. Your wedding picture, the certificate, a pressed flower and many others. But these will for the most part be handled fondly only on occasion. But your rings have a special message and will be the one ever present an ever seen reminder of this hour. And here is the message. They are round. The circle is a symbol of eternity. God intends that this union be until death do you part or until Jesus comes. This is an enduring and lasting and eternal union. And may I add the words, no separation. These rings have a design, be they ornate or plain, the artisan who designed them had a pattern in mind. So God has a design and pattern in mind, led you together. For you to discover the plan, which I've mentioned to you.
steps and direct their paths, that wherever they place their feet, they will possess the land. That whatever they apply their hearts to doing, you will give them success. That, Lord, favor will follow them all the days of their lives. That every anointing and glory that you have reserved for their lives will be a reality in their lives. So we bless them today. We bless them. We place a blessing upon them. We anoint them with the Holy Ghost. And we pray that the prophetic plan that you have for their lives will be fulfilled. They have a passion for you, Lord. They have a desire to represent you well. May it come to pass. We break any curse, any negative word spoken against this couple. We cancel it in Jesus' name. Yes. And we declare that the heavens will back them, will support them, yes. will watch over them, and will go before them in everything they do. And they will experience great, great breakthroughs in their lives. Take them now beyond their generation. Take them beyond their parents. Take them beyond the past. Take them yes. into a future that they, have, they did not even plan for themselves. So Lord, we commend them to you and dedicate them for your glory. And so we thank you for this wonderful occasion. And we now seal the blessings upon them and declare them husband and wife in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Please stand. Congregation may be seated. For as much as Brady and Abilene have consented in holy wedlock and have witnessed the same before God and these witnesses have pledged their faith to each other and have declared the same by joining hands, making vows, and by the giving and the receiving of a ring, by the power invested in me by God, I now pronounce them husband and wife in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, whom God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence. And now, the Kodak moment. <laughs> In slow motion, please take that veil off him. Well, Mr. Lawrence, you can kiss your newly married wife. Do it slowly. <laughs> Congratulations. Well done.
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. May the grace of the Lord, the communion of the Holy Spirit, and the love of our beloved Father be with you from this day forever. God bless you. Well, it's my privilege to ask Pastor Trevor to come and get them to sign the register and legalize this marriage ceremony. Pastor Trevor's been the one that's counseled them, and I've asked him to have the privilege of signing the register with them. So put your hands together for Pastor Trevor Noyle. And the two witnesses, please. Thank you. Forever seems like a long time But nothing seems like a long time When I am with you I feel like I'm walking on water Since the day that I asked your father To let go of his daughter So give me your blessing, sir I'll give her all that I've got doesn't look like much, but it sure feels like a lot. Let her take my heart and take my hand. Take my heart and take my hand. Take my heart and take my hand again and again. Right. for Mr. and Mrs. Lawrence. Whilst, whilst they are seated, I'm going to invite Pastor Justin Adi once more to lead us into the final song this afternoon as we sing together with the couple. Well, our keyboard seems to be giving us a few issues this afternoon. So we're going to join together in a cappella and bless the Lord and declare great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, Thy hand hath provided. Great is Thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter, 
springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Let's sing together. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. And all I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord. I'm Let's stand together and sing. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may take your seats. And as you take your seats, I have a very, very special announcement to make. As of now, Brady and Abby are officially off the market. <laughs> what they're going to do and continue in what they were doing as their first tasks, and they're going to proceed to this beautiful cake on the left of the auditorium, and they're going to make their way, and also uh, in union, do the cutting of the cake today. Now, I must tell you that uh, I've been to a number of weddings, and one of the weddings I went to, it was, it was almost a disaster. Everyone was crying in that wedding. The bride's grooms were crying, the bridesmaids were crying, the mother-in-law was crying, the new father-in-law was crying. Even the cake was in tears. <laughs> well, this cake has five tears. And Brady and Abby are standing right before it uh, to perform their first Duty together has husband and wife after they've done the communion, of course, the cutting of the cake. All the colors were gray, it's hard to notice. When you're out in the rain, all of a sudden, colors are starting to change. You brought the light. Now the darkness is gone, the search is over. Applause, ladies and gentlemen. Like happiness and love, may you two always go hand in hand.
and to beautiful things and beautiful beginnings who filled with love and happiness and of course sweet things forever Brady and Abby ladies and gentlemen these are two lives two hearts joined together as one in love once more I give you Brady and Abilene Lawrence As we conclude this afternoon's ceremony, please allow the bridal couple to exit the venue, followed by the retinue and their parents and family. You will, ladies and gentlemen, have an opportunity to meet them in the gardens and to congratulate them. And during this time, you'll also have an opportunity to have group photos taken with the couple. Please note that you've already been assigned to a group and you'll find a board uh, near the gardens that has your names uh, in which group you belong and you'll be assisted by a photo shoot coordinator. During the course of this time, ladies and gentlemen, and whilst we are waiting for the reception, uh, you will be served with drinks and snacks. So do, do enjoy the afternoon in the company of the bridal couple and in the company of each other. Thank you. God bless you. So I screw that I can make my heart's own rules and nothing can get to me. And you made it easy. And now my head, my heart, and my reason they say the same. And now I believe in you own the peace I made. For me to love you, you make it easy for me to love you. You make it easy for me to love you. You make it easy for me to love you. You make it easy for me. You take what's good in you, make it better. You make the way you like different.
to me is what my body does naturally. And if this life gets hard, you make it easy. You. Bro- 